everyone my name is Lori and welcome back to my channel so today I hope you will indulge me as I do a watercolor piece instead of a doll I had gone outside because the weather was ridiculously good and I just needed a break from the work I was doing inside and I grabbed my sketchbook and pulled up a picture on my phone and just started sketching this girl who was Evelyn Nesbitt I actually put a picture of her a little bit after but when I was outside, there was also a rocket launch. So I recorded the rocket launch because I thought it was cool. It's from my backyard. And I used to watch the shuttles from there. The shuttles were amazing, but it's still cool to see the rocket. So I went ahead and included the video of the rocket. You can hear the birds chirping and everything. It's kind of cool. And you can hear the rumble. If you just wait for just a second, you can hear the rumble. So it's really, really cool from Kennedy Space Center. So yeah, there's the rocket. Anyway, I decided to go ahead and sketch, and then once I got it sketched out, I decided I wanted to do, I wanted to add to it, you know, some flowers and things like that, and what, and do a watercolor painting, and then all of a sudden it just seemed like a good idea to record it. I don't know why, it just seemed like it would be fun because I don't normally record this kind of work. Now, this channel can be about any kind of art thing that's what I'd like to make it just sculpting drawing painting whatever but primarily you know you're gonna probably find a lot of doll art here because that's what my main focus is however today it's going to be a watercolor painting I'm using a Prismacolor pencil in red that is erasable that's how I drew it so I wouldn't get like a muddy painting that I got that from another artist and I thought it was a great idea. I don't particularly like drawing in the red pencil for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm such a pencil artist. But I do like the final results when you end up painting it. So that is why I chose it. And I am using... <laughs> I'm going to try to say the name of it. Sh schmink, schminky? <laughs> schminky? I don't know. German? They're German? Um, watercolor paints high quality watercolor paints that I bought for myself as treat and I am using I think it's deep cobalt cobalt green I think that's the name of the color but I'll list everything below if you're interested in what my supplies are I'll make sure to list it below the video so look down there if you want to know I'll put the colors and the kind of paints I use and all the other supplies that I used in the video so I thought I might talk maybe do a little story time about how I became an artist at home and I've kind of covered the subject before in another very long-winded video <laughs> the one where I did is a three-part series on repainting a doll in real time and I told the story there but I'm gonna do it maybe a little differently here because I think it's interesting to know how people work at home like what is your how, how do you do it so there's Evelyn Nesbitt that's who I was telling you about um and you should look her up I know that just distracted me a little bit but you should look her up her story is crazy she was the or original Gibson girl the first supermodel popular in the early 1900s she has a crazy story and when I picked out the picture and showed it to my sister she was like oh that's Evelyn Nesbitt and I'm like okay I recognize I've seen the picture before I used to love Victorian stuff and she was like, you need to read her story. It's crazy. So I would tell the story, but I can't remember any of the names or anything like that. So you could just look her up. I'll also link her little wiki down below. This, of course, was a quick sketch of her and not meant to look exactly like her. So that wasn't my intention, but I just used it as a reference. Anyhow, so how did I become a full-time artist on on not on YouTube um at home it all started when I had been a hairdresser and I had a little daughter and I didn't like all the hours I spent being a hairdresser and away from her I wanted to have a little bit better schedule so that I had more time with her and it was hard because I stayed home for the first two years and then I had to go back to work and it was just ugh, it was so hard I didn't want to leave her but I eventually did and I thought you know what my dream would be to be an artist and I would love to be able to stay home 
and be an at-home mom while working. I had this vision in my head of working in my pajamas. Like that was my dream. <laughs> I didn't know how I could achieve it. I really didn't know. At, at the time, selling your art from home, because I'm kind of, I always thought I was extroverted and pretty open and friendly, but as the years have gone by, I don't know if it's from working at home or if I'm just kind of an introvert and, or maybe I'm an omnivert, like I have a little of both. But I do keep to myself a lot, which I think is typical with artists. We just kind of, you know, keep to ourselves and live in our own little fantasy world. So uh, I wanted to do something at home so that I could stay home with my daughter. And even way back in the day, I started with my ex-sister-in-law. We started doing a show once a year. That was like an arts and crafts show. I'd paint pictures and make crafts and things like that. And it was like a holiday show. It was really popular. We, we invited a bunch of other artis, arti, artisans, whatever, however you say it. We invited a bunch of other artists in and we we had a very successful show. But uh, our dumbasses never charged anybody anything to be in the show, which was me gutting my house out, finding a babysitter, which was my ex-mother-in-law. And, you know, shooing my ex-husband out of the house. And then we would just gut the whole area. We cooked. We did all of the work. And they just had to put their stuff in the show and got it, you know, whatever they made, they made. So that was kind of dumb. But, you know, I wasn't really much of a business person. I was having fun. So I didn't make a lot of money except for what I sold personally. That's, <laughs> And it was it was also baked goods and things like that. But I thought, you know what? That made me happy. That show made me happy. I had fun creating things. And that was my, what I tried to do when my daughter was a baby and I didn't work yet. So I, I'm always, my wheels were always turning. But I thought, how do you sell to people outside of this? And I really didn't want to do art shows or else I didn't understand about art shows. I I didn't know anything about it and I certainly didn't have any of the setup equipment or anything like that. So I never, I've never done an art show ever. I think maybe my ex-sister-in-law had a friend at a church or something and maybe we sat at a table with some paintings and sold nothing and that was maybe it. But <laughs> how do you do it? Well, while I I was a hairdresser and then I decided to work at an office for a while because at least my hours would be more normal and you know I'd leave in the morning I'd come home in the evening and it wouldn't be like working until eight o'clock at night or and weekends and things like that it was just a Monday through Friday thing I didn't love it I was really bored but I did it and that's when my sister sent me or told me about eBay and that I should sell art on eBay or other artists were doing it. And I was like, what's eBay? Like I didn't even know. So I took something out of my sketchbook and scanned it and sent it to my sister, just the print. And she sold it immediately. I can't remember for how much, maybe $15. It wasn't like a huge amount or anything. And I was just so excited. Like this just opened my whole world to something. I just started drawing everything just it was just going to be pencil on paper that's all I did I just drew and then I figured out eBay and I got um, a little website built which was back then not what it is today <laughs> not at all like you go from the from HTML and build it up I didn't I, I don't even know how I figured it all out personally I know I got help from the ex-husband, but I, a lot of it I had to do myself. It was a lot. It was a lot. So I kind of got this thing going where I would paint pictures at night. So I'd work in the day, um, take care of my family, and everybody would go to bed. And then I would go out on my back porch and I would paint until about 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning. And for me, that it was... I was tired. There's no question because I get up in the morning again at 6 a.m. and do my whole day again. I was a lot younger and I found a lot of, it was very relaxing to just paint. 
at first it was drawing and then I wanted color. So I went to the library, I checked out books on watercolor and I was a little scared of the medium, you know, just painting with it. So I got watercolor pencils because it was a nice transition. I knew how to draw. So if I just drew with the watercolor pencils and then added water, you know, that was like, ooh, magic. That's how it felt anyway. And then later I progressed to buying, I think, Reeves watercolors and then eventually something of higher quality with better paper. And I started learning more and more of how to do things. But yeah, so my schedule was work all day, paint at night, and on Wednesdays, I would scan, which took forever on the old computers. I mean, we're talking dial up. I would scan in all of my artwork and build my eBay auctions, which took hours. And then all of my auctions would close and I would, you know, write everybody, thank them and start packing up all of the originals and prints that I had sold that day. And I was doing pretty good. I had this like little running. You could hear your your computer making a cha-ching sound. I was just so excited. I think I felt so validated as an artist. I think that was the biggest thing. It was just, I was excited that someone, anyone liked my art. I was just so excited, so grateful. So after about a year or so of doing that, um, and work was, you know, like I said, I was bored, I was tired. And I felt like I had the opportunity to work from home now because before, like, there was no avenue like that. There was no internet, not that I ever was a part of. So this whole world just opened up for me. And it was in its infancy, at least for me anyway. But it just, it opened these great big doors. So I quit my job and I was able, I don't remember how old Roxanne was when I quit my job. Maybe she was in maybe first grade, maybe first grade or second grade, somewhere around there. And I started to just like, that's what I would do all day. I would send her off to school. I would paint during the day and then I would pick her up at whatever time they picked up kids, maybe two or three o'clock in the afternoon and then I was able to be a mom at home with her and that that was how I spent my days and I didn't really have to work when she was home that much not really because I had all day long so um, the way that I changed from watercolor painting to dolls was because a lot of artists were starting to come into the community, you know, getting on eBay. And there were, it was saturating the market. And I was having to paint and paint and paint more and more and more. And I feel like the quality of my painting just sort of, you know, started to decline. Or else I was doing things that was like outsider art. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it was just sort of, you know, like crazy looking primal art. I would do that too. But... I, you can almost see in my old paintings like where I was really putting like a thousand percent in or when I was just doing it really fast and that I don't know what had happened I think I was panicking and my sister again came to the rescue and sent me an article about dolls repainting dolls and I was reading this article, I'll never forget it, I've mentioned her a million times, Renee Coughlin, One and Only Dolls, and it was an article about her in the Houston Chronicle, because we're from, I'm from Texas originally, and my sister was still there. And she sent me this cutout, and I read it at my desk, at work. No. No. That's not right. Was it? Oh my gosh, I got, I, I got confused. I think... I think at work it was about eBay. That's right. And then, because we didn't have email back then, that, did we? I don't even remember. It was so long ago. I wasn't, I didn't have a smartphone. There were no smartphones. I did eventually get email, but I don't remember how. I know she sent me a letter with a cutout of that article. And I got it. I must have been at my desk at home when I read it because I didn't start dolls until after. 
I left work. So I read it, and this is about two, so I must have started around two, 1998, I think I started doing paintings. And then um, around two, very beginning of 2000, I think is when I named Beautiful Faces Art by Lori Lee. So I kind of like trickled in in 1999 with uh, Barbies. I started with Barbies. I saw, she, I didn't even know you could paint dolls and sell them. I would never have thought that would be even legal. Like that's not mine. How could I sell it as mine, you know? But obviously you can because I've been doing it 20 years. Anyway, she had a picture of a doll she had painted that looked different from Barbie. And I'm like, wait, what's that doll? I didn't know anything about it. Looked it up on eBay. Found one. Simply Jean. I bought it. Got it home. And I was just like, whoa. Well, my makeup, my love for makeup, my hairdresser experience, and faces being my favorite thing. It just, it all just came together. And that's how dolls happened. But since then... I still love to do watercolors. I still love to sculpt. And I also do all, like all the different kinds of art forms. I literally am an art junkie. I have so many art supplies. I have a sewing machine, a photography studio. I mean, I mean, that sounds fancy, but it's all like tucked into one little tiny room. But it's like every corner of this room is filled with art supplies or art something or crafting or whatever. I even like to craft. If I get bored and I need a break, I've made like paper flowers. It, you know how it goes. It's just art junkie. So I don't know what'll end up on this YouTube channel, mostly dolls, but I would love to be able to put other things here as well because I do sculpt, I do paint and um, sewing. I sew, but my sewing approach is like an artist. It's not self -taught. It's totally self-taught. Or, uh, sewing so I won't show a whole lot I much prefer the embellishment part of the sewing I'm like okay I can make the bodice but look at me beat it <laughs> that's my favorite part anyway I'm getting close to the end of this video thank you so much for joining me uh, this this painting will be available in my Etsy shop and if it's gone I'll have prints there in different sizes I don't even have a name for her yet, but I had a really good time creating her. And I'm so glad that you're here listening to me. If you're still here, thank you for listening till the end. If you have any questions, put them at the bottom in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Any ideas, anything you would like to see from me, um, I will try my best to make it happen. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye. Have a great day. Bye.